I want to take you with me on my trip to Lithuania on this Friday's Travel and Young. We're the Youngs. We've spent our lives traveling the world. And in 2018, we moved from Chicago, Illinois, to Copenhagen, Denmark. Now we want to share with you how our new lives abroad is keeping us young. Keeping us young. Are helping to keep us young. Hello, and welcome to this Friday's Travel and Young. And it's just me yet again. I've been going on these little mini adventures by myself, this time in Vilnius, Lithuania. Um, I came here as part of the flag video that I worked on um, to see the painting about the uh, Danish flag falling from the sky. I'm gonna switch arms here. This arm is hurting a little bit. <laughs> Danish flag falling from the sky. It's a really nice exhibition here in an art museum. Um, I'm gonna show that, but I'm also gonna walk around the town of Vilnius because I've never actually been here before, before now. Never been to Lithuania until now. I have one day. I'm not sure what I'm gonna see. I have some plans and I'm gonna take you along and show you what we can find. And then later, actually, it's gonna be tomorrow, but we're gonna see a little bit more from that art exhibition. I'm pretty excited actually. Princess Mary from Denmark is gonna be, I won't get to see her, she'll be there later, but she's in town to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the diplomatic relations between Denmark and Lithuania. So it's pretty, uh, pretty key to this whole concept of trying to go track down Danish history around different parts of Europe. It works out pretty well with this pretty big uh, art exhibition here in Lithuania currently. All right, but right now what I'm gonna do is go walk around the city and see what I can find. Let's go. Here I am standing in front of St. Anne's Church, which was built in the late, teen, 14, late 1400s, basically at the turn of the century to 1500. And it's mostly intact, similar to what it was at the time. It's had a ton of restorations, of course, and, uh, and some new things added on, but it's a really neat place to see. It's beautiful from the outside, and it's one of the big reasons why Vilnius Old Town has been added to the UNESCO World Heritage Sites. Mm -hmm. We're going to go and check out the inside of this bad boy, and then I'm going to walk on over to the Cathedral Square and see what we can find over there. Here I am in the Cathedral Square in Vilnius. And uh, this is kind of a pretty central space. It's massive and it kind of meets an old town where a lot of important roads are. And this is where they have tons of you know, public events and things like that here in the city. It's pretty slow and dead at the moment, but I gotta say the weather has been, this is one of my favorite times of year. I love the fall. It's like light jacket weather and it's just really pretty. There's leaves already falling on the ground, different colored trees here. It's a really cool time to be here. It's basically, for me, it's the end of September at the moment. Um, it's really nice. I also really enjoy so far walking around the streets and seeing kind of these really cool, like big openings for cars to drive through. And then on the other side of the building, inside that there's like a huge courtyard. It's kind of these secret little areas that sometimes the doors open and you can peek in and see what there is. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna to have to look on Google Maps later to see what it looks like from above because a lot of these from the street just look like buildings but seem to have big courtyards inside if, if one of the doors is open and you can see. So this is a pretty neat spot. I am gonna go ahead and walk in the cathedral, see what else there is you can't see right here, but behind me there's a big tower on the other side of this building where you can see the whole city. I'm gonna go up there a little bit later at least at least ooh, there's a big bird at least it's not raining today though it's just a little overcast but i can handle that if it means no rain all right well let's go ahead and explore some more
I'm sorry to break you away from Lithuania there and bring you back to my living room. I hope this isn't too jarring, but as I'm editing the video, I realize there's a few things I need to mention. Um, I didn't get a chance to say while I was there. Uh, so far, by the way, it, it was just an amazing time. I had a great, great time in Vilnius. And, um, and what I'm about to show you is the Palace of the Grand Dukes of Lithuania, which is a beautiful place and it's basically a huge museum. Um, and it's broken up into a couple different sections. And so the first part that you're gonna see is basically the archeological history of the city and the palace. And for years, this palace was basically just an open pit of this archeological digging and finding and things that they were kind of discovering of what used to be in that location because it's such an important critical part of the city and uh, the tower and the fortress was just above it. Um, but what's there today was actually built only a few years ago. And they rebuilt on top of the archaeological dig portion of it. So then as I move through the museum, you're going to see reconstructions of what the palace should have been like and what they believe that it was like. So it's not original. There are some kind of restored furniture and uh, really cool like, uh, you know, kind of heating, um, heating things that are like the heating furnaces that are ceramic. And uh, in the earlier historical part of the museum, you can see some that they recovered and then they recreated them to build what they believe it looked like based on what they found. So it's important to know if you go there, um, you're not seeing the actual kind of palace of the day, but you're seeing a reconstruction and a massive investment by the Lithuanian government, government in order to build this just amazing historical a museum of the history of Lithuania through a whole bunch of it. I mean, it's just incredible. And also to see kind of a recreation of the palace and they also use it as a multi-purpose place for events and things. So there were sections of it I couldn't go to because there were gonna be some events later that day. So they closed those parts off, but it is well worth the visit, but it's also important to know it's not like the original palace. I wanted to mention that, but definitely check it out. This was one of my favorite parts of the trip to Lithuania. <laughs> here on the top of this kind of observation point. It used to be a castle because it's like super, super high point in Vilnius. And from it, you can see like the whole city super well on each side. But I decided not to climb up that tower because frankly, it's not much higher than I already am. And I can see a ton from here. So I'm just going to show the views from this area. But it is really neat and worth coming up. So you could either walk up or there's a path, or you can take a, there's like these birds that are super loud behind me. Um, or you can take a funicular. I took the funicular up, which only took a few seconds. And I got up here super easy, well worth the views. It's a cloudy day, but at least it's not raining. So it's pretty clear and I can see pretty well all the way out to the old parts, areas close to my hotel, this new section. It's pretty cool. You can see basically everything. I definitely would recommend coming up but I'm going to head back down and see what else I can find in the city. Welcome to my final morning in Vilnius. I apologize if there's a bunch of background noise. There's a 
bunch of cars in a road behind you in front of me. But I'm here on my final morning and then I'm headed back to Copenhagen this afternoon to be re reunited with the rest of the traveling young crew, Miranda, Maya and Brisket. But behind me in front of you is an art museum, which is where I'm going to spend my morning. Well, I've actually already spent my morning inside. It has an exhibition of Danish paintings on loan from the Stantens Museum for Kunst in Copenhagen. It's called Awakening of Nations, a Danish golden age of painting. And uh, I had clips of this already in my flag video because inside is the uh, Danabro falling from the sky painting. And that's the main reason why I came, but there's a bunch of other nice things to see inside. And uh, the director of the Cultural Institute of um, Danish Cultural Institute of Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania was kind enough to spend a few minutes with me talking about the relevance of the paintings, what it means to bring them to places like Lithuania and how it helps the kind of cultural relationship between the two countries. It was a really interesting conversation. So why don't we go on inside and uh, have a chat with him? The exhibition which we have here, uh, which is done by the National uh, Art Gallery of Denmark together with the Dalit Sun counterpart, is with paintings from the Danish Golden Age, which is what we call the period in Danish painting from the early 19th century and, 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 and up. And the paintings are, are, are a very fine representation of, of this very, very uh, interesting period in, in Danish pictorial arts. It's interesting for two reasons. A, the paintings really do have a very high artistic value but B, they also helped, and especially after they were made, to shape Denmark and what Denmark stands for. So, so the, the Golden Age pictures are very much a, a reflection of Danishness. And the reason we have it, we have it here in Lithuania is because we celebrate the 100 years of Lithuanian-Danish uh, dip diplomatic relations. The reason why this uh, expression is so very, very real and important for it. because Lithuania had the same problems in the early 20th century with defining, defining its statehood and actually defining what Lithuania would be and how it could be. And that's what also happened in Denmark in the 19th century where Denmark had to, to redefine itself after uh, the historical events of, of the 19th century with Denmark being a, a somewhat smaller than it used to be. Interesting to be uh, to working in the Danish Cultural Institute and is that we actually work with this relation between Denmark and the countries where we have chosen to be in. And so actually, so the interaction with those people. And that's actually, so actually, so we're speaking about the, about the CLO Anson picture, it actually means much more to me now to showing Denmark abroad. Because I think again, because if you are Danish, then you have, well, you have this whole thing. I mean, this is many of these pictures are things which I was forced to to look at either actually at the the National Gallery or or uh, at books, and then you know at school. And um, but 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 now you you really understand that it's it tells something to other people about us and about our history, which is very quintessential. And, and that's and that's. It's good, for, it's good for me personally, but it's also very good for Denmark and it's also very good for the nations. And again, we don't, we don't come here to, to, to brag, or to, so we, 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 we use it for a start of a dialogue, start for a conversation with, in this case, Lithuania, about how, how, how we formed our state and how the Lithuanians are forming their state. All right, there you go. I had such an amazing time and I crammed so much into those like day and a half that I was there. It was a really quick trip, primarily to go and view the C.A. Lawrenson painting of the Danabro falling from the sky for the, the flag video that I did um, that also combined a trip to Est uh, Estonia. Check that out if you haven't yet. I'm actually quite proud of that. It was a ton of work and I'm super excited I tracked the painting down, but I also had never been to Lithuania before, so I wanted to have a day to kind of explore the city before I went and saw the painting. One quick note I think is kind of funny. When I was walking around the Palace of the Dukes, I was basically like the only one there that day and there were all these people in each room kind of making sure you weren't touching things and I feel like they may have been having a game with me because they were tracking me from room to room and at one point I went into a restroom and disappeared and I think they got worried. I came out of the restroom and somebody was like waiting by the door like what? What, what are you doing here? It was just kind of this weird thing where I felt like I was kind of being 
watched and tracked as I went from room to room because I was the only one there. Of course, I had my camera and I was taking a bunch of video. It was just kind of a strange, I mean, it's not a problem or anything. It was just kind of a fun little adventure. And unfortunate, though, that not more people were walking around the museum because it's such a beautiful place. But I, it was a little interesting being the only one to kind of like go from room. And it's like a maze. It's so huge. Such a maze. I didn't even know where I was going half the time because you have to go around a bunch of little corners and upstairs and all around stuff. I mean, it's a... Uh, an interesting building. But all said, I had an amazing time in Lithuania. I appreciate, of course, the Danish Cultural Institute of the Baltics, uh, Estonia, Lithuania, um, Latvia for helping me um, with the painting and being able to give me even more context to the relevance of the relationship between Denmark and Lithuania. And as I mentioned, there were some events that were happening. I had to leave, but some events that were happening actually um, uh, to, to commemorate the opening of this exhibition and the 100th year anniversary of the relationship between the two countries. So it's a pretty cool thing and I'm glad I was able to get a little piece of Denmark while I was there because um, that's part of my goal too is to see a little bit of Danishness as I travel to different places. So there you go. Uh, I appreciate the time and I promise you I will not be alone on these future videos. I've just had some kind of like solo things going on here as I jumped away for a day or two to shoot all this stuff but the rest of the traveling young clan will be around uh, for future videos, I've got we've actually got some footage from Udense that Miranda and I took when we went to visit the new um, Hans Christian Andersen Museum. So that's going to come up pretty soon. I've got the footage from Kira and I when we were in New York. I've got my parents, actually. Um, that's going to be next Tuesday on a special try on Tuesday with my parents trying some licorice I brought back along with a small bro that I made for them. So stay tuned. There's a lot of other faces popping up pretty soon. It's not going to just be me, I promise. Uh, but I appreciate everything, as always, for the support. It means a ton to us. So with that, I'm going to say goodbye, happy Friday, and we'll see you soon.